Chapter 32 Friday, 11.50 a.m. Nurse Ratchet. Ratchet stood behind me, fists on hips like a Marine drill sergeant. I glanced at my watch. 11.40. Oh, good morning, Becky. Nice to see you, too. Feel free to drop them off any time, I said. You can count on it. I'll be at your house this afternoon to supervise cutting down those damn weeds. Got a crew of wetbacks all lined up. Just the kind of work they were bred for. Took a moment to sink in because of the last part. Ratchet was expounding on natural selection when I interrupted her. Wait, stop. Are, are you saying they're cutting down those trees without permission? She frowned at me, stretched a finger to my face, and said, Permission? No, I don't need permission, especially from the chink. I'm cutting those fucking things down because I want to and can. Nothing a fucking thing she or you can do about it. Like Gibaldi, Ratchet did what she wanted because she could. I looked at my watch. 11.52. Becky, come inside for a moment. Something I think you need to see. Before she could respond, I limped to the door, unlocked it, and opened my laptop on the counter. I heard her follow me and then go past me to the refrigerator. I opened the kitchen drawer while still punching the keys. The 45 was still there. Nicky appeared on the screen, watching me watch him. My fingers flew along the keyboard as nimbly as they used to when I was on a coding jack. Hey, Slick, what the hell's all this health shit doing here? What happened to the beer? I'm on the wagon. Six day the rest of my life. Six day? You were hauled out of here in an ambulance unconscious. Word is you didn't wake up for three days. You can't count the days in the hospital. My fingers jerked to a stop. Damn it. I was so close. Concentrate. Fuck. Just come over here, damn it. I hit save under my signature and looked at my watch. 11.59. Take that, you beautiful on the outside bitch. I hoped the vampire had been sweating blood. I looked down at the ugly one, inside and out, and grinned. Look at this, Becky. Know what this is? As she waddled over, I switched windows. Nicky leaned forward, gun in hand, watching me. I hid his window and turned on additional functionality on my laptop. I decided to start Ratchet at the beginning and pulled up a document. She leaned forward, snorted, and sneered up at me. Well, congratulations, Slick. You got yourself your own damn company. Next Life LLC. Isn't that cute? You should have come to me. I have a cousin up in Wyoming who sells these by the dozen. Could have got you a break on the price. Just what are you planning on doing? Opening your own lawn care business? I returned the smile and carefully pulled up another window, not wanting her to see Nikki. I turned the screen to her, keeping my finger on the mouse pad. Glad you asked, and thanks for telling me about your sister. I'll keep that in mind. I do plan to stay in lawn care. Here is the title transfer for Adeline's house to New Life LLC. Oh, you haven't heard about that from Carl? Maybe the news hasn't bubbled up yet. Yep, Adeline has moved on. She stepped back from me, her eyes narrowing to slits. Who the fuck are you? I smiled, raised my palms, and shook my head at her. You have no idea just how good of a question that is, Becky. And maybe someday both of us will find out. But for now, how about letting me finish? She didn't answer, and stared at me as though I had grown claws and fangs to match my face. I had told her the truth. I had no fucking idea who I was, why I had just done what I did, or what the hell I was going to do now that I had just spent most of the rest of Dragna's money. However, at some point, Nikki would come upstairs to weigh in on the matter. I needed to wrap this up. I switched windows again and slid the laptop in front of her. Now, Becky, if you look here, you'll see I also bought this goddamn place. See? Right here. She leaned forward slowly, keeping her eyes on me. There was nothing wrong with her survival instincts. She glanced away long enough to confirm the address and suddenly pulled back, her eyes wide. My vampire had more than my power of attorney. She had the reputation. Do you know what that means, Ms. Ratched? Her attitude was having problems keeping up. She shook her head meekly and backed up. I leaned forward, smiling as hard as I could to accent my sneer. That means, Nurse Ratched, that those trees out there are mine. You understand? Wait, don't leave. I have one more thing to show you. Trust me, Carl will want to hear this. These are original plat maps of my properties. I'll just put them side by side. It was coming too fast for her. She was a disoriented pilot flying over snow-capped mountains, sheathed in clouds and losing altitude. 
like a pilot locked onto his instruments as the clouds became a snow-covered peak. All Ratchet could do was stare at me. Slowly, she eased her hand into her handbag. I was too late to open a drawer for my concealed weapon. I walked around the island and motioned for her to look at the laptop. She stepped forward, locking eyes with me as I yielded. Then, having reestablished her bearings, heading, and altitude, she looked at the screen. The blood drained from her face as she hit the mountain. I heard the anger in my voice as I spoke. You've seen this, haven't you? You know I own the entire corner of Cottonwood from the edge of this place to the city limits and from Adeline's house to the river. And guess what, Becky? You've just been recorded witnessing the deal. Her knees started to give, and she reached both hands to the island counter to support herself. I leaned across the island, sneering my smile. That's right, Becky. I not only own it, but I also know what I own. And today my lawyer is paying the taxes in advance. When I flung out my arm to point at my fairways, she started backing up. And as she did, she pulled a snub-nosed revolver from her purse. I shook my head at her and tried to keep my voice steady. Becky, you are being recorded. People are watching. They are already calling 911. It was partially true. She was being recorded. However, the transaction had not required a witness or a recording. Turning on record had been a reflective act. If I had thought it through, I never would have had the vampire on the other end of a live line. When I hit accept, Dragna's money went into two accounts, one under Driscoll's company, which the feds now controlled, and the other, the lawyer's offshore account. As far as the vampire was concerned, I was now nothing more than a loose end. She would have been telling Becky to pull the trigger. Fortunately for me, Becky had crashed and burned. Instead of emptying her gun into a man threatening her, she carefully slipped it back into her bag. As I started around the island, Ratchet turned and stumbled to the door, fumbling with the handle, unable to tear her eyes from mine. As she fled, I yelled after her, Oh yeah, and I know these houses were never incorporated in your fucking HOA. Tell Carl I'll be fencing it all off. In my mind... I heard her screams fade down the street. She left the door open. As I closed it, I looked at the Russian olive trees I saved. Those snake-ridden, golf-ball-infested, skin-peeling flagellums. I wanted to take a gas can and set them on fire one tree at a time. My new face, my new life was all gone. And for what? Some damn list be noxious weeds. Rage surged through me, and I turned to end the life of the man who had ruined mine. I whirled to the laptop, my fingers fumbling. He was still watching me, gun in hand, his head cocked in a way I recognized. With a sinking feeling, I realized I did know this man. How had we all missed it? I stared at my screen, completely motionless, moving only my finger on the mouse pad. My watcher leaned forward, cocking his head, wondering what I was doing. We both knew I was too close to the outside door for him to risk coming upstairs to the hallway. He needed me to go to the bedroom or bathroom where there was no escape. Keeping my head motionless, I opened the island drawer and pulled out my forty-five. Then I pulled back the slide, released it, took a deep breath, and ran for the hall. I needed to get to the dungeon door before he reached the steps. I crouched low as I swung the door open and pointed the automatic down the dark stairs. I almost started firing before I realized no one was coming up. I started down the stone steps holding the gun in front of me. It was just occurring to me to be surprised that I was still alive when I reached the bottom. Coming down the stairs, I had nowhere to hide. A professional would have stuck an arm around the stone wall at the bottom of the stairs and started pulling the trigger. He wasn't waiting for me when I stepped onto the dungeon floor around that corner. The shelving blocking Martinez's hideout was pulled back, and light streamed from her room. I could see the back of his chair and a foot the toe resting on the floor as though he was rising. I kept moving. If that foot twitched, I was going to fire into the room, hoping to catch him with ricochets. I ignored the voice in my head when it said, Just kill the son of a bitch. I now wanted answers from the man more than revenge. A moment later, I was staring at him down the barrel of my automatic. He jerked his head around, then shook it. Without a word, he lowered his weapon to the table and slid the chair back. Trying desperately not to drop my gun, I leaned on the shelving for support. Neither of us spoke for a long time. Finally, he smiled ruefully and said, A fucking honey trap. I should have known. 
Hello, Richard, I replied to my old business partner.